I'd say they've had a pretty bad day. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. It is early here in Wisconsin. The sun has just come up. I've had a full day already. I had to get up early this morning to take care of a paper wasp nest that I found under our deck yesterday. We have a walkout basement and under that deck where you walk out of the basement, uh, I, I've got a little chair swing where I was pushing one of my boys yesterday and we quickly found out that we were getting buzzed by a few wasp and at that point I looked up and saw about a paper wasp nest about the size of a softball I guess you'd say so not small but not big yet so I got up early this morning to take care of that mess and we were successful so I have no complaints regarding that it's always a it's always a little bit of a ordeal for me just because I do get pretty bad allergic reactions to uh, stings. And I like to make sure that I'm not gonna get bit. So I got all dressed up in my big striker ice fishing gear. So I had a lot of extra padding, put on a hoods, put on a, a big, big set of boots and go out there with gloves and everything on. And we took care of them, they're, they're done. No concerns there, uh, but so it's early and the boys are still sleeping in the house. So I figured I'd come down to the river and shoot a video for you. And today's video is pertaining to questions that I get from viewers. And most of the questions regarding today's video have to do with rod and reel types when using a chatter bait or swim baits. And I'm gonna combine those two questions of what rod and reel do you use with a chatterbait and a swim bait into one answer because for me, it really is the same rod and reel setup. Uh, I will say that I'm not talking about really big swim baits. I'm not talking about glide baits. I'm talking about the standard, you know, three to five inch hollow belly or boot tail swim bait that you'd throw say on a ledge or just over some grass. But for me, it comes down to, it's, it's all about the rod. The rod and reel is the, the most important part to your chatter baits and to your swim bait fishing. And most specifically, the rod. So what I use, this is, a, I, you know, I build my own rods. This is an MHX blank. This is a CB906, so it's a, it's a blended rod. So it's got some backbone to it. But once you get up to about the, the middle part of the rod, at that point, you start really getting your parabolic bend. So it's definitely more of a moderate to maybe a moderate fast rod. Uh, the nice thing with the MHX blanks is that you can, you can really hone in your chatterbait and swimbait uh, rods really well because they have a 905 they've got a 906 they've got a 907 so those are all the same blanks just slightly stronger than the other and for some people they like a little bit stronger rod or for some people a little bit less stronger power rod but i just really like it because i can i can alter based on say size of the swim bait so if i'm throwing a six inch hollow belly i might throw the 907 rod if i'm throwing a four inch i might throw the 906 but in either case, the key with all of those blanks, and my favorite is the 906, it just is, it's really good all around blank for this, is that parabolic bend. It's that, the, because it's a blended rod, let's see if we can get this in. Because it's a blended rod, you get really good parabolic bend. And I'm not putting all that much pressure at all on it right now. And you can see the bend of the rod really comes all the way about halfway down the rod. This being a 90 inch rod, you're talking about a seven and a half footer, which I think is a really good uh, length to be throwing for chatter baits and swim baits. So first, I just want to talk about, let's key in on chatter baits. A chatter bait, which is what I've got on here right now, to me, the key with this, this bait is to be able to get it in the weeds and then rip it out of the weeds. 
you create that explosion and that's what triggers the majority of the fish to bite. If you're not ripping it through weeds and you're fishing it, say, just, you know, in open water along docks or along just the shoreline banks, the chatterbait creates its own erratic action. If you watch one, yes, it vibrates really well going like that. But a lot of times the blade will skip and it'll shoot to one side. And that, that's what creates the, the true triggering reaction ability out of this bait. So you're either doing it by imparting that action with your rod when you're ripping it through the water column and the bait's doing it itself. So if the bait's doing it itself, you don't have to, you don't have to impart that. But one of the keys with the rod is if you have a soft tip, that allows the bait to hunt more so that when it does skip and shoot to the side, the rod is not pulling it back. It allows it to skip to the side a little bit further than it would with a, a faster graphite type rod. Uh, you know, at that point, the rod's not gonna give. So if it wants to skip, if it's going like this and then it wants to skip, but your rod is is got a, you know, extra fast action tip, it's gonna pull it right back into line. If you have a soft tip with like, say one of these blended rods, you'll be going like that and when it skips, the rod will give with it and allow the bait to skip. So it gives it more erratic action. That's the biggest thing in my opinion. If you're fishing it around grass and you're ripping it through, creating the action, you know, that erratic action based on ripping it, you still then need a rod that's got enough uh, power in the lower half to really rip it through. So that's why you don't necessarily want to go, in my opinion, with just a straight fiberglass rod. At that point, it's more of that, you know, it's too whippy at that point. You don't have the power. With a blended action rod like this 906 that I'm throwing, you have the power to rip it through, but that soft tip that will allow it to, to still hunt as, you know, as good as the bait can on its own. The other key with that soft tip is when a fish does come up and inhale it, and like I said, a lot of the bites with this are complete reactions. So when that happens, you know, the fish is sitting behind a log, the bait comes over it, you know, and hunts to the side and the fish just snaps and, and gives you one suck on it. By having a fast action rod or, or faster and a graphite type rod, it goes right back to what I was saying before about hunting. If that fish tries to inhale it, the bait is being pulled away from the fish's mouth. You want to allow that bait to be sucked into the fish, into the fish's mouth. And a softer tip will do that for you. Uh, that's one of the biggest keys. When it comes to setting the hook, you know, it's almost like fishing a drop shot in a way. You kind of just reel into the fish. You've got an exposed hook. If they've got it in their mouth, you just reel down and create pressure. And at that point, you you know you've hooked that fish with a chatterbait when it comes to swim bait fishing it's really the same sort of deal now you're not imparting much ripping action because you know you're not going to be fishing a swim bait through the grass nearly as much and if you are where you're fishing it weedless say like on a flashy swimmer at that point i would probably go with a faster action you know a faster action rod a graphite blank on it just because you're going to want to be able to set the hook and keep that fish coming through the grass but if you're fishing a ledge or open water you know suspended fish with a swim bait where you've got an exposed uh jig head like my guppy head uh shameless plug you know at that point again you're doing the same thing you want you want to have a soft tip so when the fish comes up and engulfs it they suck the whole bait in and at that point you're, you're just kind of you just start reeling you lean into them and you reel faster and at that point the exposed hook of the swim bait will just hook the fish and you know it all comes down to wanting to be able to allow the fish to suck that bait in and i think a lot of people don't realize that when they using that fast action or extra fast action tip they're they're they have extreme sensitivity at that point and they're feeling that fish nip at it and they're pulling it away and they're not letting the fish get the bait. With a bait like a chatter bait or a bait like a, a swim bait, it's almost better not even to feel the bite. It's almost better just to be reeling it and just have it load up because at that point you know that the fish has it. You just lean into them. 
if you feel them tap, 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 at that point, they're not getting it. And you could be like, oh, they're swinging at it, but they may be trying to get it and you just don't have the right uh, equipment to allow them to get it. It's just something you guys wanna be aware of. When it comes to reels, guys, I have two, two approaches to this. The first is just you know a nice, steady, slow retrieve. That's when I like to go with a reel like this Abu Garcia Revo Winch, which is a slow speed, slow gear ratio reel. I really like this for, for fishing early in the year with a chatter bait when I'm trying to feather that bait through the like new, new grass that's growing. So you've got say grass six inches off the bottom and I wanna keep my bait down and kind of feather it through that stuff. That's when I like to throw a slow gear ratio reel. With swim baits, I like to throw it generally a slow gear ratio reel more than a fast gear ratio reel because I'm trying to keep it down in the water column most of the time, whether it's ledge fishing or whether it's just suspended fishing where I'm fishing fish down 15 feet over 40. Um, the slower gear ratio reel slows me down. And again, it's about the fish getting the bait. The slower that I'm pulling the line away from them means that the better they're going to be able to suck that bait in if they come up to strike it. I will also, though, go with a high, high speed gear ratio reel uh, with both instances. One being, you know, if I'm fishing a chatterbait through pretty thick grass, I want to be able to pick up line when I'm working it over the tops. So if I'm fishing, you know, midsummer into the fall, I'll probably be throwing a, a faster gear ratio reel. When it comes with swim baits again, I, you know, I have no problem throwing it on a fast reel just because I know it can always slow down. And if I want to impart action by burning it and really making it move at times, then I have that ability with a fast gear action, a uh, fast gear ratio reel. So it's, uh, it's one of those things, guys, you want to be able to utilize your reel and your rod to help that bait uh, work to its fullest and be able to not even work to its fullest you want the fish to be able to get your bait and that's one thing a lot of people don't realize you can it's not bad to give up a little bit of sensitivity to have better hookups so thanks for watching guys i hope this was helpful i hope this answers all the questions i've gotten on this topic uh, it really is a question that i've gotten a lot over the past few months of doing these videos so if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. we got more videos coming out every day.